Do we have to make decisions or can we just let them ride and see what happens? That's what we'll find out today. Nothing is more difficult and therefore more precious than being able to decide. Napoleon Bonaparte. Today we're going to talk about whether decisions are important or whether we can be what they call in Firefly, the movie, I'm like a leaf on the wind, just floating to the next thing. This got me thinking about it when I was talking about my friend who always said that quote, I never make decisions that are more than one day apart. That way I can only screw up one day's worth. I said at the time that it's an interesting philosophy of not having regrets about the decisions you make. But I said, in the end, that's not why he's deciding to do this. The reason he was doing that kind of lifestyle or why he thought about that type of lifestyle is he wasn't making any decisions at all. He just was going to do a decision and go with it. William James said that no decision is in itself a decision. You are deciding something even if you're not deciding of it. Yet somehow people who feel like they don't make decisions are doing the right thing because they can't possibly even choose wrong. You can't make a mistake because you're not picking something. You're not doing anything that would change your life for the worse or maybe the better. And so you just get a year older and another year gone of when you had opportunities to do something exciting. And in the end, it's probably better to make wrong decisions than to make no decisions. Because when you make a decision, you have the chance of being better or learning from the decision. But when you're not making a decision, your life is stagnating and you're coming towards an end of any type of advancement you're going to make in your life. When I talked about the part about having no regrets and that I didn't have many regrets in my life, the truth is, actually, I spent many years of my life not making decisions and would grumble once I had to. I have to pick a major? What if I don't know what I want to be? It's nice because when you don't do it, you say, oh, you see, I'm never wrong. I never picked the wrong candidate. I never picked the wrong direction. I never did it this thing and it ended up going the bad way. You're just not picking anything. And so you think in some way you found the secret to life. But that also means I never got the job back then that I would have loved. I never reached out and tried to do something hard. And maybe I failed, but then I would have learned from it and done better the next time. And to be honest, I was lazy, a bit indifferent. And somehow I just sort of hoped that some magic light beam, I would be shown the way. Or maybe I wouldn't even care about being shown the way because I was tired. I was busy. I was busy working four jobs. How could I possibly have time to make decisions in my life? Yet, maybe I wouldn't have four jobs had I made decisions. So in the end, decisions were made. The decision to stay working in four terrible jobs was my decision by saying, I'm not picking a new job or I'm not going to try for a new job. And it made me poor. It made me feel stuck. I didn't really enjoy having roommates and all those jobs and being in that situation. Honestly, it felt like stagnation. My friend got married. I wasn't getting married. My friend's husband had a good job. I didn't have a good job. I didn't have anything. And so you risk losing the kind of life that you wanted to have, spending your time doing the things you wanted to do because now you're just working four jobs and you have no time at all. And for me, decisions are hard. It's funny, I do something that I call unshopping. So even if I'm shopping for something, maybe I put half the stuff back because I decided to unshop it. But even when it comes to car shopping or something big, house shopping, when I bought my house, it's hard for me to make choices. And so then I just sit there and stare at them and not able to choose. I just wished at the time when I was in my 20s, someone would just pick for me. Pick me an occupation, I'll do it. I'll do great at it. I'll work really hard at it because I was a really hard worker. But don't make me make the decision. Don't make me pick a major. Don't make me pick a direction. Don't make me pick a guy that I wanted to marry and, you know, live happily ever after with. Instead, I just felt poor and underappreciated. And now that when I think over it, I'm like that shopper who can never quite get to the register. I can't ever decide. And so 
then the cost eventually goes up. It's fine and adorable when you're in your 20s because you probably have a lot of runway room ahead of you that you can figure something out and eventually launch. But what if you just keep going? No decision. Year after year, decade after decade, you could end up in a bad place where you're suddenly not having decisions left to make. You know, at some point, you will run out of choices. You could be anything in your 20s. You could be most things in your 30s, but as you get to 40, it gets harder and harder. And so what happens is, is when you don't make decisions, the decisions start going away. You will not be this thing because you needed time to become that thing. And now you don't have the one thing you need the most, which is time. And this isn't to say that your life is over, but it's to say that you have to start making decisions because if you don't, avenues are going to get shut down. Now, you may find other avenues that will make you happy and that you'll like, but you have to decide on them. Eventually, the cost will go up and you won't be able to do those things. You know, for example, it's easier when you're in your 20s to go live someplace else because you have less things tying you down. And so maybe if travel was your big thing, you know, you can do it easier when you're young. Then once you start, you know, getting married and having a family and maybe it's not as easy for you to do. The cost of indecision goes up drastically the longer it goes on and the older you get. The other problem is, too, is that people see you as indecisive. You don't look like the kind of person who's determinative, who who makes decisions and gets them done, who has goals in their life and with a bit of research could do anything you wanted to do. Instead, you just kind of look like a person who's drifting and not really going anywhere. I eventually got to the point where I started being able to make decisions because I had spreadsheets. I bought this house based on spreadsheet. It was all the different things that I wanted in a house, plus or minus, and then added them up. My friend Allison over at podfeet.com told me a new type of weighted spreadsheet that would make the obvious choice more obvious. And so I started doing that. But spreadsheets have been a big part of my decision making method for a while because I at least learned that I could do that. I could at least come up with a count of pros and cons. And sometimes it's not great to make decisions by spreadsheet because there's some qualities that just can't be enumerated, can't be counted on. Some things that just make life so much richer that you can't put a number behind. And I even think with the job I just got, I had a spreadsheet of pros and cons. But you know what? This job has been more than what that spreadsheet said. It has been to be a part of a team I love, with people I love working with, with this warmth and collaboration and working together that I didn't count on. And I couldn't have counted on it. And I couldn't have put it in the spreadsheet. So sometimes even doing decision by spreadsheet isn't quite good enough. The other thing that I used to do, and I heard this on a podcast, is flip a coin really high in the air, and then start thinking, which side do I hope lands up? That might tell you some inner secrets about what's going in on your brain. I do have some sort of a problem, and I don't know what it is, where I can't really tell where my emotions are. I don't know why. I don't know what it is. It's not like I'm an unhappy person and I'm burying my emotions. I'm just not in touch. And so, again, I'm perfectly happy in my last job. But now I'm so much happier. It's almost like I can't tell you that a hammer hurts while smacking my hand with it until the hammer stops and I go, oh, yeah, that is much better. I don't know why that is, but I have a hard time with it. And I think that's part of the reasons why I struggle at times to make decisions. Because I can't feel anything is wrong until it goes away. And so that might be part of it. And some ways that people, again, think of you when you are not a decisive person. They see that you're kind of drifting. They may look at you as a procrastinator. They might think of you as someone who's fearful, that you're always questioning what it is you think about, or that you seek the approval of other people. Just being indecisive all by itself could make people think worse of you, including your work world. They may think worse of you because you're never coming to a point. But decisive people have that characteristic that they know where they're going. They see their true north. They know when it's right to take a risk or it's not really working to take a risk. And then they make the decision and they get what they want. It makes them look confident. 
It makes them look like they trust themselves and it makes them look like they have a vision in life and that they take ownership of things and they go after things. So it's even important to be that kind of person when it comes to what you look like to other people. Not just the fact that you're ruining your own life by not making decisions. You're also, I guess, ruining your reputation with other people when you don't make decisions because they don't look at you as the kind of person who makes things happen. And so things that you can do to help yourself make decisions is that you can ask your friends, people are close to you, you know, and I know that sounds indecisive too. So what do you think I should do? But other people who are close to you and their advice for you is really good and can help you. Is there any kind of research that you can do that would help you learn a little bit more so that you can make a learned decision about the situation? Is there a way that you can see the pluses, but not just that, the minuses? Because if you can see the end results of some negativity that might happen because of your decision, If you can understand it better, how likely is that bad thing to happen? How likely is it going to have a negative impact on your life? Or is it something that you can overcome? I had, as I mentioned before, surgery, and it was going to lay me up for a little bit. But you know what? The amount of time I was laid up from when I was healing is a drop in the bucket compared to feeling great every day after that surgery. So even though I thought about that, well, it's going to take a long time. I mean, it was a Paul, I think I was supposed to be out of work for 10 weeks. And that was hard for a person like me to be, you know, not doing anything. And even after that point, it took a while to get back to where I was. But you know what? I feel better every day of my life because of that surgery. That 10 weeks is nothing now. So is it true that the negatives are going to be that bad? Or if you do have negatives, they can be overcome? Are there ways that you can ease any sorts of fears that you have that this might not work out very well or that you have some sort of anxieties about it? Can you ease those so that they don't play such a big time in your life, either through the power of prayer and coming up with a plan of how you're going to deal with negative aspects or your anxiety could help you quite a bit. And again, it's our, I think there's a famous quote about it, but it's our experiences that lead to our decisions and our decisions that lead to our actions and our actions are what make our lives our lives. And so if you never get to that decision point, you never get to the point where your life is your life and the life that you've built for yourself. And so you never get there. And by deciding at all, you are making a decision and it's a worse decision every step of the way. And so if you want to make it so that you never improve, You never move forward. You never build on your education and on your strengths and your abilities. Then indecision is the direction to go. But if you do want to learn and you do want to grow, it's time to get over the fear of bad decisions and start going after it. And once you start making decisions, here's the interesting part. You get better at making the decisions. So the next time you have a big decision to make, you're going to be better at it. It also means that when you make decisions, more time effective. I spent all these time oh, thinking, oh, should I do this? Or oh, should I? I have a whole library of books in here about careers. They were little quiz books and, and career things. And I have my scrawlings written all over them about what I wanted in my 20s primarily from a job. And I spent so much time thinking about it and noodling about it and pondering about it. When you become a person of action, you can spend less in this debate and more time acting towards it. You get more productive, your self-confidence starts to build, and you start getting over these kind of anxieties, depressions, fears, the things that we were just talking about, because you're taking action. You start getting better at it, and so your confidence comes out, and you're able to really tackle those things. You're able to then even decide things on relationships. If your inability to decide things is causing a breakdown in your marriage or your friendship because nothing's ever getting better and you're not getting improved in those things, your relationships can be harmed by this. But once you start making decisions and you start moving forward and you start getting confidence, you start being a happier person, suddenly your relationships are getting better too. So the first thing to do is that you're going to have to know what your goals are, what it is that you're looking to do. And again, this can get convoluted. In this new job, did I want more money? Oh, sure. Who doesn't want more money? 
But I also knew that I really wanted to be happy in a team I liked working with. I wanted to help my retirement situation. I wanted to enjoy getting up every day and, in, and liking what I do. And I liked what I did before. In fact, what I do now is very similar to what I did before. But this new tilt at it, this new angle at this job has made me even happier. But until you know what you want to do and you spend the time, here's the thing. Say, well, Jill says I have to know what I want to do and I just don't know what I want to do. It's not an excuse to not do this. It is an excuse to get working so that you can start taking action at it. Then we have to, again, break it down into small steps. You know how much I love the small steps. But we talked about in the book with Adam Savage about setting deadlines, that the deadlines are going to make you better. And it's going to give you that energy to make a decision. I remember at one point I made a decision in my last job. I said, if I don't get this next promotion, I'm going to go find a different career to be in. And I gave myself that deadline. Now, did I do it? Not as well as I could have, but I should have followed it because it was this indication that the company and I were on different paths. It wasn't a bad thing. It wasn't a slam on me. In fact, I was highly regarded. It was mostly that my path wasn't management. And I think that I agree with that. I don't think that management in that company was what I was really looking for. And maybe everyone saw it but me. But it was the time to move on and do something where I would be promoted where I did have room to grow in a way I wanted to grow and in a way that I would benefit the organization I was with. Now I'm in that situation. And you got to commit to your decisions. I know that it's hard because as soon as you get through your first hurdle, so you decide that you're going to get a new job and then you get your resume together, you do some research, you find some things you're interested in and things you're not interested in, and then you don't get that first job. Whoop, guess that's over with. Nope. We're committed to the goal, to the North Star. We're not just committed to just getting this next job. Sometimes you have to put in a lot of resumes before you get the right job. So sometimes not getting the thing you want is going to set you on the right path. But understand, your decision is a long haul. It is not just the next thing. I think you have to be nice to yourself if you're very stressed out about what it is you've decided to do. Make sure that you relax, you take hot baths, you go for long walks. You do things that will help you keep that stress down. Exercise is the great way to work on your stress. And make sure that you figure out how to beat down that anxiety and fear that you're having inside of you while you're in the process of fulfilling your decision. You're going to want to be interested in what's going on if you're applying to places and you're not getting action on your resume or your application for the job, find out why it is. Are you applying for jobs that are not really suited for the resume that you're submitting? Or are you maybe trying too high or trying too low for a different kind of job? Maybe there's a reason you're not getting what you want to do. It's always good, I think, to have that third person view. We talked a little bit about that in the last podcast where you're sort of overlooking the situation as if you were standing on a cliff. If you could see where you are moving and what the plans look like, that shift of perspective we talked about, sometimes that can help you figure out what's going right and what's not maybe not going so well. And make sure you understand that you learn from your mistakes. We want to make sure that if you applied for a job and that didn't quite work out, what could you have done differently? How could you have been more prepared for it? Or again, maybe you were applying for a job you shouldn't have been applying to because it wasn't the right fit. But you should be less worried about failing and more focused on learning for when things don't go right, about being curious about what's going on. And that will help you get into that situation where you can make better decisions and keep going. Again, you don't want to get scared. You don't want to just stay and get stuck in some sort of decision panic. You don't want to just sit there and spin. But instead, you want to be someone who's taking action who's taking steps, step by step and doing what you're looking for. So this is a time for you to stop being just stuck in the middle and instead making steps, fulfilling individual goals. Again, if it was a new job, first I have to think about what kinds of job I want to have. Maybe I have to write a couple of resumes, one for this kind of job, one for that kind of job. 
you look around to see what's there. You talk to people you know who maybe work in a company you would enjoy working in and that they might be able to help you get into that industry. Start writing some of these things down, whether it's in a journal or it's a do list of what you need to do, but make sure that you start taking action. And once you start making these small steps and you start taking these actions, you will start again to learn. You will start to benefit from each of the decisions about whether it's a new job or whatever you're doing, either by succeeding in that small step or not succeeding in that small step. That's going to help you go to the next step. And then you'll start seeing that having decisions is the right way to go. So my challenge to you is try to think of one thing that you've been spinning on and treating the indecision around this thing as a way out so that you don't have to make a decision. But instead, start taking the bold step of at least making the decisions. Then from that point on, you can figure out your small steps. All right, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can email me at jill at startwithsmallsteps.com. Please remember to subscribe to the podcast and tell someone else about it. I'm trying to grow the podcast and the community. I'm trying to figure out how we can be a community together. And you can start with a small step by letting me know what you think about this podcast and what a community could look like. And just remember, having a decision firmly in our grip starts with small steps. <laughs>